Yeah, that's our shit. That's our sh- that's our era. Yeah, now see now you tapping into our era, Jer. Yeah, the Bronx. Yeah, it was made in the Bronx. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was real life shit. But what, yeah, like, man, Arnold was, man, what, his ass, man, that shit was relatable to us, though. Because the shit that he was doing in cartoon, he was doing in school, for real. <laughs> like, like, yeah, at that time, though, you know what I'm saying? Like, I used to leave uh, freelance and come to my my, my, my wife, mom house. Yeah. And you spend a night there to the next morning, and they had a room for me. They had a room for me, like one of the guest rooms was like my room. So uh, when I when I go to her mom's house, the, the TV be you on so. Cartoon Network and, and Nickelodeon. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Cat dog and motherfucking. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cat dog. Cat dog ain't no no. You right? Cat dog ain't no no. Cat dog is. It's auto. Auto rocket. Auto rocket ain't no no. Auto. Uh, well, they got my boy on the. Uh, they got cow and chicken on that motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. But that. But that's some shit. Yeah. That's, uh, what? That's uh. Some uh, adult swim shit, ain't it? What? Talking about what? Cat. Cow, cow oh, chicken. Cow and chicken Nickelodeon. Nah, nah. Cow and chicken wasn't adult swim. I don't think it was. It was no, it was. Cow and chicken made cow by the same. Come on early in the morning. Cow and chicken made by the same. They made by the same people oh, who made. Stimpy. Right, Ren and Stimpy, yeah. But so the same oh, producers Stimpy, of yeah. cow and chicken is Ren and Stimpy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pink yeah. in the brain. Yeah. brain. But see, that's Warner Brothers, yeah. Yeah, they go. That little purple one was my nigga. That was my nigga. Dang. That nigga done. Yeah, yeah. Nah, nine eight nine nine. Nah, motherfucker, man, SpongeBob was not made for kids. Oh, that shit was not made for no motherfucking kids, man. <laughs> the first season of SpongeBob goes so hard, nigga. Yeah. They so wrong. Yeah. yeah. They so wrong with that shit. I just watched turn this Murph, shit. Turn Murph up a little bit, man. Murph up a little bit. I just, Come on, number one. I just watched this shit. Check one, two, chick, 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 all right, chick. All right, bet. Yeah. Say something. Keep saying. Keep yeah, yeah, yeah. It. I just watched that shit, man. I wasn't really uh, tripping on. Yeah, I wasn't. Uh, right, a lot of times with Nickelodeon. Yeah, I'm good too. I'm good. Man, me and Nickelodeon got a hate, love, hate relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just because of the name. Just because of the name okay, alone. Okay, yeah. Nick, 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 Like my first name, Nick. He got hell, man. They wore that shit out in elementary school. No, Nick, 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 It was a DJ. Nigga, they wore that shit out. Yeah, Mobile, yeah, yeah, Nick, you're nice. Yeah, yeah. Yep, DJ. That that dude is the reason I changed my name. My my name used to be Nick and Ike. Nick and Ike for real. Yep. Yeah, yeah. When I was, a, yeah. Oh. See, I I met him on my run with the crooked. You know when we do a crooked letter shit. Yeah. And that's how that's how we met uh the last Mr. Big. We developed a relationship before he died. Oh uh, yeah. The last Mr. Big. <laughs> <laughs> but one thing Mr. about Mr. Big, Big, Mr. Big, everything he got was green, like army green. Like he had a a, a, a Corvette, he had a, something else. I think whatever a expedition or something. All of them was the same color green. I know. Yeah, you know. yeah. Speaking of podcast, I told you. we are back. Yeah, ladies and yeah. gentlemen, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome, welcome back. back. This is the one way show. Yes, sir. I am Kenyon 3955. DJ Murph too cold. Yes. And it's on one way dog. And that's up. 
And you already know how it gets. Just get, <laughs> you already know how we get down with the get down, man. <laughs> That's right. Listen, man, we got special guests in the building. That's and Murph, right. I want you to uh, go ahead and introduce him, man, because you know you, you know he. Oh he, man, yeah, look, yeah, so yeah, yeah, he up your alley, man. Uh, yeah. um, he a legend. We, I want to say got that. A, we got a legendary, legendary turntablist. Legendary. Legendary club rocker. Yeah. Uh, a Jackson, Mississippi native, a North Side baby. Oh yeah, oh, you yeah. know Heiko. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heiko Park, baby. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The infamous Norwood Ghost Town. Yeah, the yeah. infamous. This is a podcast. Run what back? Run what back? Cause I'm keeping all this shit in here. Yes, we been live for about eleven minutes. Right. <laughs> See, this what I'm saying, people. This is what I'm saying. You, this is how it goes in the podcast. <laughs> where motherfucker want to tell you to cut and all the fucking right. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, nigga, you been talking the whole time. Yeah, the whole time. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. Nah, yeah, I can I can see Murph, bro. You good, bro. I promise you. you can. Do, bro. He good, bro. He good. You you're doing too much. He good, bro. You good. Thank you. I'm good. All right. Yeah. Now yeah. Sorry. <laughs> back. Back to the oh, yeah. introduction. Oh, Thank yeah. you. <laughs> For the interruption, man. The North Side baby himself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ghost Mr. Town Travel the World. Mr. Crooked yeah. Letters. Yeah. Mr. I've been doing this since oh, yeah. before doing this. <laughs> yeah. DJ. Fingerprint. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Everybody clap it out. Clap it out. Clap it out. Clap it out. Man, listen, man. Thank you for having me here, man. The one way show. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, we've been talking about it for a while. Yeah. uh, I'm here now. We here now. We here now. So, look, to start off, man, I guess we can start off with the roots. Um, So, I know you grew up on the north side. Yeah. Uh, What neighborhood are you from? Norway. I mean, Norwood. Norwood. Norwood, to be exact. Norway, the area, uh, Forest Avenue, uh, uh, Watkins Drive. Right. We was on that corner corridor. Uh, Heiko Park is most definitely the neighborhood. They call it Ghost Town. The area is Ghost Town. Now, that's something I Me had to see. learn new. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, I'm thinking Ghost Town was Georgetown. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But, uh, it took nah. me a long time to get the neighborhoods, too. I ain't right. know Brown Bottom, okay. Ghost Town, right. from from Presidential Brown. Hill. You see, I knew about Brown Bottom because Brown Bottom was across from Vern Dishon. That's right. like where my family got their start when they moved to Jackson, you yeah. know, right there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I know all about that area. But Norwood, you know, that area always just been North Jackson. Like whenever I went to the, yeah, he from North. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he from yeah. North Jackson. You know what I'm saying? Yep. That type yep. of they thing. always be hating on North yeah. Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. But see, you know, no Jackson player though. We we always play. We know how yeah, to play. Yeah, man, you know we get so. money. We we, we <laughs> right. play. We the we, freshest. Right. right. Yeah, we, you know, so don't hate. Don't hate. Yeah, them. Don't yeah, hate. Talk them. this shit. <laughs> so look, um, so you you, you started out on the north side. Right. Uh, were you always into music? Uh, well, kind of sort. Did you kind of like sorta. develop into it? In all aspects of when hip hop was birthed, and I and I witnessed it, I was all aspects. I danced. I beatbox. I tried to rap. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We had a group, uh, elementary school, Green Elementary, what up, what up? Uh, yeah, we had y'all. a group called the Bump City Lovers, man. The yeah. Bump City Lovers. The Bump? Yeah. <laughs> Bump Lovers. City Lovers? Yeah, yeah, man. And, uh, you man, know, how cats, did y'all come up with that name, man? Just cats from the neighborhood. We was into rapping, freestyling, and stuff like that. And uh, me, I took a liking to beatboxing. Yeah. Each rapper had a beatbox. You know, it was me, myself, uh, Felix Walker, yeah. Kevin Williams. Marvin Williams, all of us, uh, Kenya Williams. Right. And uh, I, I remember one, uh, uh, we had a carnival at Green that, that was in the evening. And we was out there, you know, in the cypher. And then next thing you know, the kids from the neighborhood, older kids started getting in the cypher. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the first battle, you know, we was in. And we was holding eyes. We kids from elementary. We was like fifth, sixth grade battling yeah. Cass and Junior High, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, we took I took a liking to hip hop early, early off, and that's kind of like the start. We got into dancing. I was always into dancing, uh, high top fades, and uh, you know, yeah. uh, Big Daddy Kane and uh, uh, Kid and Play. You right, know, right, different right, dance. Right. Cause, you know, coming up, that was the dance area era. You know, it was cool to dance. Yeah, you know? uh, we didn't stand on the wall. We battled each other uh, from the break dancing the era. <laughs> We really started shit. on that stand on the wall. Yeah, they no, no. F- we're fucking boosted. No, 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 we, we didn't stand on the wall, man. Because, I mean, fucking we came boosted, out of break dancing. I mean, break dancing was a thing, and, uh, yeah. you know, uh, and that, that came out of from the skate ring. We used to roller roller skate, and we went to the middle, took off the skates, go to the middle, break dance, and pop lock and all that. Yeah. And it grew up from 
uh, wearing hammer pants and slacks and and having high top fades yeah, and, yeah. And, and you know yeah. that era, you know it was it was something, man. Yeah. It was something, bro. It's crazy yeah, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because because yeah. our era that like that described it like when Dipset came out. Okay. When okay. that nigga Cameron started wearing pink, yeah, everybody in the school <laughs> yeah. was yeah. wearing pink, bro. Yeah, and everybody in the school and was had pink. no I idea why. Right. Because right. get that shit. Real I guess was wear pink. Yeah. Right. Right. And right. niggas. Was <laughs> well, see, <laughs> Cameron and Harlem do. Harlem is very flashy. You know, uh, Dapper Dan that made all the Gucci. Right. And right. That's Harlem. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, Dougie Fresh. That's Harlem. You know. What I'm saying? Yeah. Right. And uh, they they they're flashy. That's what they're known for in the New York borough. Yeah, you know yeah, saying? yeah. Being flash puffy, puffy. Yeah, that you know motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. So uh, most definitely, most definitely. Uh, Cam, Cam. I'm gonna tell you something about Cam. Cam was uh, signed to the same label that Crooked Letters was signed to. Okay. Uh, um, 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 uh, was it correct? Not correct records. Uh, Penalty. Okay. Penalty Records was a subsidiary of Tommy Boy Records. Nori was the the prize artist, right? On on okay. penalty record. Before before we get before you go there, okay, though, okay, before okay. before you go okay, there, right, you know right. what I'm saying? I want to know, you know, about Crooked Letters. Okay, like, okay, all right. How was that formed? You know what I'm saying? And you know how did that come about with all three of y'all? You okay, know what I'm saying? all right. So well, how did you meet Kamikaze and Banner? Really? Uh, well, um, met Banner first. Uh, me and Banner grew up together. We played football at Green Elementary. He's from the Queens. Okay. He he went to Reigns, but his father, fireman, my father, fireman, they knew each other. And uh, my father probably told him that, yeah, yeah, he played for Green. So he brought him over there to play. And uh, we played football together. We became friends. That was early age, you know, yeah. early age. And then from there, um, did you, did you know y'all had like some type of musical connection? No, it I was did just, not. Y'all was just... I did not know. We were just being kids. Yeah. We were just kids. Uh, no. You know, I don't. You know, until we called him Billy. His his name was Billy. Yeah, you know, Billy, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Billy. You know, he, everybody know that. You know, yeah, what I'm for sure. From the so you know, he was just Billy. I'm Tim, and uh, you know, we played football. You know, what I'm saying so. You know, that's how we, me and David Banner met. I met Kamikaze actually when. Um, Maybe like when I got in high school, you know, he was into rap, but I knew about him. I had not met him. Right. Met him. Uh, our mothers worked together, uh, teaching and everything. They did their early teaching, like after college, together at Velma Jackson. That's in Camden, you know what I'm saying? Camden, Mississippi. So that's where they met. But he was on uh, Kids Corner. You know, he was the intellect, you know, uh, in his books, you know, yeah. cover cards. He, he, you know, all like that. So he was on this thing called Kids Corner that came on after. Uh, Saturday cartoons, you know what I'm saying? That oh, was, you talking came about the LBT. education show, Kids yeah, Corner? Yeah, Kids Corner, oh, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. He was on there. He was he was on there, the early one, the first ones, you okay. know what I'm saying? So, uh, so, yeah, so that's where, you know, and, and then when I got to Jackson State in 92, that's when I actually met him, and he was rapping. They had a crew called The Network. Him, his brother named uh, Brandon, right. him and Brandon, and uh, JC, they had a group called The Network. Okay, so... This is all in 92 when I met, right? Right, right, right. Okay, I'm just getting there. I'm Sonic Boom, uh, Jackson State. So I'm engulfed with just the band. But right. I'm DJ, you know. I DJ, right, right. you know, picked up DJing in, 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 you know, in junior high. You know, right, I've been right. doing it. You know what I'm saying? So uh, get to Jackson State. That's where the stuff that I see on TV and the stuff that I want to be involved in as far as hip-hop, this is what I'm seeing on campus. I'm right, seeing, right. You know, Cats with uh at, at that time it was afros and uh, afros and ball heads and, 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 and uh, <laughs> uh, you know Hirachi Nike Hirachis and uh, uh you know th that era in the baggy pants right, right. Uh, you know what I'm saying that era and I'm just seeing all this stuff that I don't see here in Jackson you know what I'm saying yeah. that type of stuff so hip hop was like in full. You know, uh, the the golden era was going down on Jackson State campus. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? So uh, that's when I met uh, all those guys. They were finishing college at that time. Uh, Kamikaze and Banner, had, he had went to Southern. Uh, right. Banner, he was a freshman at Southern. I, you know, I, I was a freshman at Jackson State. So uh, I, I know I'm rambling, but it's just so no, much. No, no, so you got much. time. Uh, I, I would see Banner. He worked at Kroger on Northside Drive. It used to be a Kroger <laughs> right there across from where the McDonald's and Popeye's is. Right, you right. You know, what is, what is oh, it okay. now? Okay, CSL Plaza. It, okay, uh, no, no, no. That, that was Dairy Queen back in the day. 
I'm right. talking about over uh, behind churches right now. What's what is that place? Well, well, where's the union? Some some yeah whatever. Yeah yeah yeah. It used yeah, to be yeah. a Kroger right there. Okay. Right, it used to be a grocery store. It so he was oh uh, AAA. Right. It's AAA something. Yeah, AAA yeah. some like shit. This. It's a warehouse. So he was a courtesy clerk. Courtesy clerk pushed the burgers right. 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 That was so he did that, but he had a beat machine. Uh, Ry thirty, I think that was a rolling Ry thirty. He used to make beats, and at that time, bass was the thing. You know, like cats had uh, low rider trucks. You yeah. know, what I'm saying they'll fill their cabs up with the you know the speakers and everything like that. So bass was the thing. DJ Magic Mike was the thing. Uh, who else was uh, was it? Uh, Munchies for for your bass. What, what was the group? Uh, Munchies for your bass. Uh, Dem- Nemesis. You know Nemesis, those type yeah. of groups. With the bass, the different tune, boom, 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 boom. You know that was in. So he made beats, beat tapes for that. And he hustled those hmm. while he worked there. You know, and he. I saw him one day there at Kroger. He was like, man, you know, check out my tape and everything like that. So, and uh, that's when I saw that he was doing music. Yeah. And I was DJing at the time. And you know, yeah. so we linked up from there. You know, what I'm saying us two. Yeah. And then. Uh, we collaborated with a group of folks uh, at at Jackson State um, called the Stew Pot Stowaways. It's a collective of, of folks. The Stew Pot Stowaways. Stew Pot Stowaways. And the reason why they were called the Stew Pot Store, or we were called the Stew Pot Stowaways, because we were from different places, uh, you know, in in the United States. Right. Where we came together, and we were like misfits of hip hop. Right. Because in Jackson. Nobody looked in at, at Jackson, Mississippi for hip hop at that time. They right. looked in California or, or New York. Right, right, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So we all had the styles and the charisma and all the talent, same as everywhere else. You know what right. I'm saying? So you know, we came together at Stew Pot. Um, shout out to all my Stew Potters. Uh, uh, Abstract Mind State. That's the group. Stew yeah. Pot Stowaway, Old School Ice Cream, and uh, EP. They just got a deal with uh, Kanye West. Okay. Uh, it's Damn. a sign with them, like presently right now. Uh, okay. You know so they've they yeah. been on the grind the whole time. Yeah, the whole time, man. They just, you know, never stopped. And uh, they just got their deal. And the same as Kamikaze now, you know, he's yeah. managing uh, Dear Silas. Yeah. They're doing big things. Yeah. And you know, you know, David Banner, he's doing right. his thing yeah, and everything. Of course. Right, right. So, you know, all, all history. But it's so much, man, to talk about as far as that, man, as far as, um, you know, how we came to Crooked Letters. Uh, well, it was through Stew Pot. Yeah. Once again, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Then out of Stew Pot, we just said, man, we ought to form a group, you know, called Crooked Letters. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't even mention my group. My group was called Poetic Climax. You ah, know what I'm saying? Man. Poetic you know, <laughs> Climax. Poetic Climax. Poetic Climax. Hey, that shit sound dope as a yeah. motherfucker, though. Yeah, that was uh, uh, myself, yeah. uh, Prism. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Prism from uh, South Jackson. He went to uh, Forest Hill. He's known throughout. He was crazy cat. Known yeah. throughout the city. Had style, though. Very hip hop. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, and uh, Kevin McMahon, Copper Top, my, my, my guy. You know what I'm saying? Right. White guy. You know what I'm saying? But he was one of the first white rappers in the community that uh, did his thing. You know okay. what I'm saying? Before uh, pre Eminem. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 Eminem, yeah. Eminem. Yeah. He was just yeah. into the culture so, like yeah, that. Into the culture. He went to uh, Forest Hill as well, you know what I'm saying, from South uh, South Jackson. And uh, we, we formed part of the Climax. And that was my first time going in the studios, doing scratches on people records and stuff like that. And it, it grew from there, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So uh, once part of the Climax fizzled and, every, you know, we uh, – started formulating Crooked Letters. We was already doing music together. Right, you know right, 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 right. We was always in the studio at Freddie, uh, uh, Freddie Young studio. Freddie Young is a legendary artist from Jackson. Um, had a group called Show Nuff, 70s, 70s. You know, traveled the world and everything from Jackson right here. So he had the hub and studio where all Jackson artists went to and recorded. Mm, I don't yeah. care who you are. You went to Fly Recordings and recorded your record. Right. So we was there all the time. That's how Crooked Letters kind of formed. Us doing records together and collaborating with right. the Stupa Stowaways. You know what I'm saying? And uh, boom, you know, we got a deal. Well, we got Unsigned Hype first. Right. I in, heard, I remember. The source. Uh, yeah, now I heard about Unsigned Hype. We yeah. wasn't the first Mississippi group, though. Shout out to the Ragabonkers, Humdinger, and uh, R.I.P., the Fat Daddy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's a group, uh, the, the Ragabonkers. They come out of Jackson. They got un- unsigned hype first. You yeah. know what I'm saying? First group. Then we got it. 
And uh, it's you know, crazy because they said unsigned height was getting a lot of motherfuckers on. That's how Biggie got signed to Puff. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah through unsigned right. height. Yeah. Yep. Mm. So th- that's how we got on. Man. Yeah. That's and, dope. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> First we were signed to uh, this uh, label called Correct Records that was out of L. A. Something like that. Somewhere in California, man. Yeah. And uh, that didn't quite w- work. We did one single with them called Caught in the Game. Right. On this college uh, like sampler. Or whatever, and uh, you know, we did that, and then we got a deal with uh, with Penalty, which uh, in which Nori was uh, the right. main guy there. Right. And you have uh, Cameron; he he was there yet, you know, a couple other cats. Was Pun there at the time? Pun was on, but he, was Pun? I don't think Pun. He went was with on penalty. penalty. He went with Penalty. Was huh? Mob Deep with him? No, no, no. Okay, Bob so this Deep. a whole okay then cool. Nah, Mob Deep was on Loud Records. Okay, yeah, that's loud. what I'm thinking about. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm thinking records, about. Yeah. Right, right, right. So at that time, you had a lot of independent labels that were signing to major labels for distribution. Okay, like Tommy Boy was the major that you know uh, Africa Bambada came out of uh, De La Soul. A lot of major. Major cats came out of uh, Tommy Boy, so it was kind of like a semi-major next to Universal, you know. Right, like, right, you know, right. So, how did the deal kind of change the dynamic of what you were doing? So, you were were you DJing at clubs at this time? Um, once you first hit campus, no, or did no, it take a while to kind of build while. up? Or I learned. Um, I was doing little stuff, you know. I was doing little parties, house parties. I had been, but see the thing, I had pristine turntables, like. Before I got 1200s, I had some um, some tables I bought from the pawn shop that were not 1200s, but they had curved arms and pitch control. They had the knob pitch control. So I had a modified dope where I could scratch and cut and do some of the things that the average DJ couldn't do. So, you know, um, when I got to Jackson State, the Chicago DJs, that's one thing I learned. I learned a lot from the Chicago DJs because sure. they were into the music. Yo. Just music, period. I learned a lot from them because, you know, they, they were into house music, but they went into disco, which led into old school breaks. Right, right. Old right. school music. That's why I learned a lot of the old school samples and breaks from listening to records right. with Chicago DJ. Shout out to Hugo and uh, Lowdown Lynn. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I used to rent my turntables to them when they used to do house parties. And, and, and it was the popular thing. Shout out to... Uh, most definitely DJ Scrap. Me and DJ Scrap were a alike. Sure. We came up yeah. together. We we met each other, came up together, and kind of came in the ranks together. But these cats were like um, uh, Mark Full of Flavor as well. Throwing the, the major parties, and with me having my equipment, that's how I was able to rub elbows with them. And they were like, yeah, come with me. And I, I was able to see how they did things and learn the music, learn more about, you know, in depth about music, you right. know what I'm saying? And, uh, and also cats that I met in the band, you know, yeah. at Jackson State. Mm-hmm. Like I was in uh, in the band with cats that were jazz music musicians. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I was learning more about jazz music too at the same time and relating that back to hip hop. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's what gave me a love for jazz music. You know what I'm saying? And it's stuff dope. like that. So it's man, dope. it was just like I tell kids right now today. You if you don't you know if if you can get an opportunity go to college. For yeah. real, dog. If you get an opportunity to go to college, because it's like a melting pot of different cultures from different places in this one place that you can meet and network and make relationships right there. And, right. and you're telling where this person is going. Right. Well, this is your boy. Yeah. Right. You know, or this is your girl, and they now the president of this bank or doing this or doing right. that. Or, right. or, you know, they were interning at this regular label, but now they, you know, over promotions or this and that and the other. Right. Man. And that's how it was for, for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how it was for me. You know what I'm saying? When I went on tour with David Banner, um, I was able to, every city we went in the United States, I knew somebody there yeah. from from the yard. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. I call them up, man, we in town, what's up, come on, you know? And it was like that. Nah, you know, that's something. Or I had relatives. Right, right. Relatives. So how was the world tour? I always wanted to ask you about that, but like, and who was all on that tour? Okay, well, it was several tours. The first tour, the first tour I went on, as, as, as far as with, with Banner, it was the mixtape, uh, Down South mixtape tour. That was with uh, Little John, Ying Yang Twins. Uh, 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 oh, that Crunk era. Yeah, the Crunk, all the Crunk guys. The Crunk uh, era. Uh, Pastor Troy? Uh, no, not Pastor Troy. Bone Crush? Uh, Bone Crush and then with the, the, the Lyrical Giants that was on. 
what's the brother for, for love and hip hop? I put my scrappy. balls on you, little scrappy. Scrappy, <laughs> <laughs> scrappy cool though. We kicked it. We um, uh, and a couple and of more people. Man, so on you. That was like that was like my first time on a tour like that. You know, uh, going around the United States. We went mainly down south and Midwest on that right, tour. Right, right. So when he got on with the Fifty Cent tour. Uh, that's when we traveled all over the United States and Canada. Which we fit this into that was. That, that was, was the no, it was the What's the 50 Cent crew name? Uh, G Unit. G Unit. Thank you. That was a G Unit tour. Excuse me on the podcast. We, <laughs> right now, we the pre game this yeah, thing. Yeah, pre game. You know like what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm they you know, saying. So, uh, yeah, they but yeah, so it was a G Unit tour and, it, and they went to Canada and everything. So that was like amazing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We was in uh, hockey arenas. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, we was on the bus, and that's that's a different that's a ex- different experience on a tour bus. Yeah. Instead of flying to your destination, you get a chance to see, see and shit. stop, and then you got all the attention because the whole bus is wrapped. Right, yeah, right, right. So yeah. it's like, you know, and, and, and then you know we got everything on the bus. You know, what I'm saying everything, uh, PlayStation, right. and, you know, lounges and everything. You know, just don't have the bottom bunk. Try to get a, <laughs> on the top, man. a bottom bunk uh, on the first tour. <laughs> <laughs> you, gotta you gotta pay your dues, but it's, it's much fun, and uh, you make you know money doing what you love, seeing the world, seeing a lot of different people. And then I was fortunate enough to be on another tour that was on my on my own uh, self. Uh, okay, it was myself and uh, 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 Skip Coon. Uh, Skip Coon, yeah, Skip Coon uh, yeah. Jackson native, Southside represent. Cold you know as hell. We went to Ch- Ch- Check Cold Republic. Cold as a motherfucker. Man. Like. Yeah, one thing they have in Europe, they have hip hop festivals. They have well music festivals, period. Yeah, yeah. But they have hip hop festivals where you will have like just anything you can think of in hip hop that's going down. You got break dancing contest, graffiti, graffiti contest, uh, beatbox contest, DJ of course DJ contest. But you have kids that uh, rip you to straight shreds, bro. Yeah, I'm talking about kids like. Barely 12, 13, and they killing it. They killing it. So they're out the womb doing hip hop stuff in Europe, man. So mm. they taking hip hop you know more serious than we take it. Well, yeah. In, in, in a way. But they do all our music like that. Because, right. like, the blues players would be telling the same story that I'm telling. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. Cats that play blues and real jazz. Right. And, you know what I'm saying? That type of stuff. Overseas, I always take the stuff that we create here in America. Right. They take it and, and you know, right. love it. You know what I'm saying? Yes sir. yes, sir. So what was the most exciting place you went to while you were on those tours? Like the most exciting city? I mean, the Czech Republic most definitely because it was just surreal, man. You, it's surreal. I mean, I was in a, a, a penthouse uh, spot, you know what I'm saying, where I could see the whole city. And, like, you know, when you look at National Geographic, you know, type stuff when they're in other places in Europe and different things. This is like that when they show Italy or something like that. It kind of reminds you of that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And you go into uh, clubs where music that you love, they are grasping to it. The most underground thing that you may like, but nobody else like here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They own it. They own it. They live. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. Nobody speak English. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Around yeah. you. You know, yeah. you just around, and the only thing y'all have in common is the music. Yeah, the music. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Y'all so, turn. and you know, you Don't got know some people saying. that 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 speak English because English is, you know, all over. Uh, universal language. Yeah, yeah, universal language. So they they be intrigued. They come to you know, like, well, I want to practice on my English. So how how do you do? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. So you know, it, it's it's most definitely, uh, you know, just being over there. Also, uh, Africa. Nah, I've been okay. to Ghana, been to Ghana. Spent some me and Kamikaze. Yeah. Went to Ghana, man. We had a good time out there in Ghana. Most definitely, uh, it's most definitely not what you think. Right, you know what right. I'm saying? You think uh, Africa is a certain way, but man, they just like us, man. Cities, skyscrapers, right, right. malls, oh, you know, different you. things like that. A um, lot of Asians, right, uh, right. owning businesses. You know, man, like, crazy. What, like what we have in the Indian zone. The, uh, different convenience stores and right. stuff. They got Chinese doing that. They own the hair shops and you know the convenience stores mm. and all that stuff. That's crazy. Yeah, exactly. But but you know it is you know it is what it is. But right. it's dope. You know Ghana's dope. I mean, if you get a chance to go to somewhere like Ghana, I would suggest Ghana first. 
and, and, and branch off from there. They got beaches all around. You know, Ghana is a coastal spot, you know, so right, it's right. on the west coast yeah. of Africa. So they got beaches all around, like different beaches that's beautiful. Right. Yeah. You know, that's dope. You know what I'm saying? But so, listen, oh, go ahead. Okay, but listen, yeah. man, I wanted to um, get more in debt, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the crazy shit you ever saw on tour? Yeah, come on, yeah, yeah. I just, I want to know. I tell you, one, one, one time we did a show in a, in a little scrap with the widow. Uh, it was a tour we did in, in, uh, in uh, Germany. All right. And they came out, you know, we, we did Southern, it was a Southern show, and it was a dude came out with the Confederate flag on his back. And he turned. Like, he thought it was something that we embraced because of Little John, and uh, you know, he had a record. On that cover. With the, that cover. And it was burnt, it was on see, fire. It was on fire. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I remember that shit. But he brought it out because all they know is crunk. Yeah. Crunk, crunk was the thing then. Crunk. Yeah, he turned. So he brought it out and he was all, yeah, yeah, you know. And you know, Banner, he stopped the show. <laughs> he stopped the show. He was like, hey, where you get that? You know, he was talking. I, I can't remember verbatim, but he wound up taking the flag and trying to burn it. You know, he's trying to burn, burn the flag, but they took it and they, yeah. they ripped it apart. And, Everybody got it ripped it apart and everything like that. Right. So that was kind of funny, right? Yeah, there. that was funny. Most <laughs> I mean, it's so many, it's so many crazy things. Yeah, uh, it's you know overseas Germany. We we, we, had, <laughs> we was in the room, man. We had females that just jumped in the van. Like oh, man. soon as we left the club, like literally, like yeah, like eight chicks yeah. jumped in the van, like. <laughs> You know, and what roll with us do. back yeah. to the hotel. <laughs> what we supposed to do? Not good. Right, right. Not it was like fish, you know. So, right. well, not. Nah, nah, that's the wrong analogy. Okay. <laughs> but you know, I was gonna say fish jumping in the boat, you know. So, like, anyway. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Throw the fish back. <laughs> Sport but fish. Anyway, yeah. Sport fish. Yeah. Throw them back. Okay. Hey, right, right. Well, yeah. One or two of them did. You know? Yeah, for sure. But that was, that was just weird, and they they rode with us to the thing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, to the hotel and. It was wild. Yeah. Was wild, wild you know? night. Good time. <laughs> Good time. But, yeah, that, I mean, it's just crazy stuff like that happened, yeah. man. But me, I was really the level head cool guy, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, <laughs> right, right, right. Level head cool right. guy. And I was just taking in all experiences because really what I did was um, the opportunity to shadow Banner when he went, you know, uh, to. Do his interviews, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Uh, to the studio and work, and I got a chance to meet different people. Swiss Beats, I met Swiss Beats, chopped it up. Uh, Manny Fresh, of course. We yes, we sir. had a session uh, at at um, Stankonia Studios. Okay. Okay. Manny studio, Fresh yeah. sat in with them, and there I met um, what's the guy that made uh, in the club getting tipsy? I it made oh, you him talking about uh, Jaquan? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he was with the uh, yeah. I met him that night because they was in the, uh, the, the next door studio doing work. We kicked it that night just vibing, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, just a lot of different things. I was able to learn a lot as far as um, the industry and how you move on a tour and different things and make money, you know what I'm saying? You know, uh, uh, I was able to make money, send money home, and keep money. You know, I I, I can use my per diem. You know, per diem is money per day, you know, that you would get. You know what I'm saying? So, I I would send my money, money that, that I made home and use my per diem. You know what I'm yeah, saying? just ball Yeah, just live. Yeah, just live. You know, cool. I mean, so I, I for me, money. you know, being a DJ. Yeah. Uh, my question would be, what, what do you remember an experience, um, while you were DJing that you was like, this is one of my best times ever DJing. Like while you were on tour. While I was on tour. Um, like a the first city. night. The first night. Well, not a specific city. In, in while I was on tour, they were all live. Uh, I go back to Europe, man, because the experience was different. It was a unanimous just thing. And I, how I spent here at B Day, yeah. I was spending like that. Okay. I, you know, just whatever's all off the cuff. Mm-hmm. And it was, yay, yay, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, like I'm over there, I'm jet lagged. This is in the Czech Republic. I'm asleep in the car and somebody come and wake me up uh, at three, four o'clock in the morning. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's your time to go on. So I come on, I'm playing just James Brown breaks and stuff like that. Just old school stuff. Yeah. It's getting the party going, man. I mean, I never experienced that before. You know what I'm saying? The stuff that I just 
like to play and just woo the crowd yeah. that really doesn't get ticks here. Over there, they was like responding, yay, and oh, they and give you the people energy. getting up and people putting girls on top of the head. And, oh, yeah. You know, and I'm playing like stuff from the south and I'm playing stuff from the north and I'm just playing everything, just whatever I like or whatever. And they loved it. And afterwards, it was I felt like a, a, a star, just me, you know people interviewing me yeah. uh, different djs from different spots you played this joint you got that record and i showed them when they go like oh my gosh wh- how much you want for it now yeah. like they cherish stuff like that you know mm. vinyl records yeah. you know what i'm saying like man you played i heard you play uh tomahawk uh uh, uh champ you know what i'm saying i had the 45 you know what i'm saying and oh. they, he couldn't believe i had the actual record you know what i'm saying stuff like that man so that's what really blew my mind. But when we was in uh, Canada on the 50 Cent tour, and uh, you know, you know, you go out and warm up the crowd. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. That was something else too. Yeah. You know yeah. What I'm saying? That was something else too. Uh, I don't. One time, uh, an artist did show up in uh, Oklahoma City, and this was a crooked letter show. We right. Did crooked letter. We had opened up, and uh, I, I guess they were trying to get their money. Mystical was the closer. And uh, yeah. they were trying to get the money together, and it was like nothing. You know, the crowd was getting you know restless or whatever. So I came up, and I rocked the crowd. I rocked out the crowd. You know, crunk tunes and everything. Got yeah. them right, talking on the mic to the point where David Banner Kamikaze got on stage with me and rocked out with me and everything, and really saved the show. Yeah, really saved the show, man. You know, what I'm saying? Organic. so that was dope. Yeah, that, that just came out of nowhere. I got on stage, did my thing, and. Uh, you know, even brought some people on stage, you know what I'm saying? Just okay, right. keeping the crowd together, you know what I'm saying? Doing doing my job, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So Oklahoma City, I remember, but it's countless others. There's just too many to name and uh we've been like I said, free game. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you gotta ask me specifics for me to get yeah, so, yeah, yeah. The, the, what we're talking about now is a tour. What what's the timeline for? Cause I know when you came back in the early two thousands, right? You was at Freelance. You was rocking I was Freelance. at Freelance at the time when I was so you was doing period. both? Yeah, I was doing both. Okay. Uh, well, it was at the end, kind of sort of the end towards like a lot of the banner stuff might have been the middle towards the end because the earlier stuff I was, well, let's see. It, it's so jumbled up because it was happening like simultaneously right. uh, together, like yeah. one after another. Like when I got back from doing the uh, European tour with Banner. Right. Uh, I was in the Czech Republic that August, the whole month. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it's kind of like that. But um, timeline. Let me see. From um, I would say from old from 2000 all the way to oh seven oh eight. Mm. You know what I'm saying. Like I I had a ten nine to ten year career with. Yeah, I'm a decade, yeah, I did. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying. Even after. He stopped and he wasn't making records. He was still doing dates and he would call me. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, uh, that you know what I'm saying. We had a few tours. Um, we had one tour with Crooked Ladders and that was with the last tour with Tommy Boy uh, with the Lyrical Giants. That's when when I met Bone Crusher and that's how a lot of the stuff happened with Bone Crusher and Jackson. Right. And, you know ah. their relationship with us. And that's how they got. You know with, what I'm saying? Oh, that's how they met Reese and Bigelow, Bigelow and mm. all that. He used to come to Jackson. And stay at my house, the house on State Street. The house and on I, State Street. Yeah, right there the on State house. Street. Yeah, the infamous crib right there, the Sugar Shack. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying. <laughs> Everybody know about that one. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Boom, he used boom, to stay boom. there, uh, and those are like the the kind of like mid to later days when I was at Freelance. Because I started Freelance when they first opened, right. like maybe 2000, 2001, man. Yeah. And I was there clearly till 07, I can say. Yeah. All of, yeah. 01 to 07, man. I was the house DJ. Uh, vinyl, using vinyl. I went through, I, I was using vinyl, and then went to CDs, and then, you know, uh, it was over with after that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> was, well, yeah, because he got um, those first turntable players that were like, uh, I think they were Pioneer. Yeah. Uh, like turntable CD players. Right. Know, yep. They had the vinyl on top, and then after that, he went on here. But you put the CD got, in the middle. You put the CD underneath, like, it was like a CD slot. CD player slot mm. and the things spun and they were they were they wasn't they weren't good for the mobile DJ. They right. were good for like if you kept it there because if you take it around, that laser was so yeah. uh, delicate yep. that it get off kilt and it'll skip. It'll mm. skip. So skip like you have to if you just have it at a place that it never moved, they were cool. But like for a DJ like us, they got to move and get our money. 
No, it wasn't. It wasn't a good deal. The CDJs were the best. The best thing, you know what I'm saying? He, he he upgraded to that, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Harvey Freeline, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to his brother Tracy, Tracy Freeline, you know what I'm saying? All them cats, Crow, you know what I'm saying? I mean, that was a good time, man. Freelines was great times. I learned a lot. And yeah. that was really my first um big club or big resident DJ serious club, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I right, treated sure. that like a job, man, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was working at Bebop at the same time, you know what I'm saying? And that was another thing. So everything I did was like intertwined with music. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Intertwined. I, I met people at Bebop, working at Bebop. Uh, you know, uh, different cats would want to put their record in the stores. You know, I helped facilitate a lot of uh, consignment for a lot of the local cats around in Bebop. And as well as uh, the regional cats that came in that was doing No Limit, right. Cash Money, uh, 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 Suave House Records, yeah, yeah. Memphis, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, 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 Texas, you know, all, all of that, you know what I'm saying? Um, I, I got my feet wet in all kind of aspects of the industry, you know, yeah. really. I was fortunate enough to do that. Uh, hold it up. For you young niggas that don't know what Bebop is. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's I'm a, sure y'all don't yeah, know what Bebop record, is. That's a record store. It right. used to be a record store right. with, with before CDs y'all niggas vinyl. started using LimeWire and Napster yeah, yeah, and yeah. stealing all the goddamn music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Most definitely. <laughs> right yeah, before LimeWire came out, right, Bebop right. used to be open. CDs used to be ten to twenty dollars. Right, uh, that's right, that's right. You had to go uh, in there, search through uh, uh, like a library. Yeah, 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 like a library. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Deluxe, deluxe CD was like thirty fucking dollars, man. Yeah, deluxe CD. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, the double, on yeah, the who, double CD. Yeah, it depends, it on, depends who, on who it was. I'm but yeah, you. it was close to thirty. That shit was damn Master P was wild. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, Master P. Master P. That wild, nigga yeah. there, but boy, he had, him and Baby. Shit, and I work, I work with man, Baby, man, that nigga. I worked there in the every CD. That nigga had with twenty dollars. I worked there in the. Had to think about it. I, I would say I worked at Bebop from '98 to uh, in the same spot over there by the Metro. No, I worked at County Line. I started there, and then that's when we left to do the Crooked Letters thing. No, 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 no. Stop. I would work at UPS. We got on with Crooked Letters. I asked for a leave of absence. They denied it. Take right. this job and shove it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Can I cuss? Yeah, you cuss on okay, yeah, okay, I've been okay. cussing. I'm like, fuck y'all, motherfuckers. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Okay. And I went to New York City. And your packages. I went no, to New right. York City. You know what I'm saying? And that was my first time in New York. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, did it big out there. I experienced a lot. I met a lot of people and, and made a lot and made some relationships yeah. that I still have to this day. You know what I'm right. saying? That's real cool. So, um, yeah, that was the quick last era. And then after that, I didn't have a job. When I came back, and my boy, uh, DJ Conscious, uh, Ruben Dilworth, he was working at uh, Bebop County Line. Right. He, I was like, and it was like the only way you can get on there at Bebop, you have to know somebody yeah, to yeah. get you on. You know right. what I'm saying? <laughs> so yeah, yeah, he was did. about to leave to, to go out of town, to move out of town. He was like, man, you can get my place at Bebop. I was like, oh, cool, like, cool, yeah. They got me up in there. I worked there, and then um, that's when banner stuff started popping off and um i left to do that yeah and you know i came back and i was like look you know i called i'm like man i'm back in time i need to work you know blah blah, blah. and they was like we're gonna put you at uh maywood mart because uh you know they I, had a I, bebop maywood mart yeah yeah yeah, yeah. uh dollar tree where dollar tree yeah is. yeah, yeah that's, that, that's that's that was bebop ain't maywood. no nothing about that you know oh saying? god that's yeah. that's what the old bebop was you said with three of them yeah, yeah, it was three on. Yeah, yeah. Metro Jared, Center, talk shit. Metro yeah, Center is still there. It's still up. The building is still erect. Yeah, the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah the building is still erect. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. The building is still erect. So Metro Center, uh, uh, long, Maywood Mart, and, and County Line. That was that was the Jackson. Then we also had one on Gulf in Gulfport, right there on the on the strip, right there on uh, you know uh, on the beach. Yeah, ain't nothing about the uh, right there. Ain't nothing about the mother two b Yeah, then the then one, the I one over there. The Metro Center. Yeah, the one over there by um by Chester and the shit. Man, I, yeah. man, I went over there and bought a uh, drama CD. Right, right. You know yeah. Saying? Yeah, when right. they were selling their CD. Yeah, man. that's right. They were I, up man, there. I left school just to go buy this man's CD. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to go get it, for real. Left chest thing. Left chest thing. Yeah. Go buy that man's shit, man. I probably Walked sold there. it, too. <laughs> yeah, you about did, <laughs> too, man. Uh, you about did, too. I probably sold it to you. <laughs> I was young as hell, too. But, yeah, man. I mean, that that was like, I met a lot of people. Who's who of Jackson. Yeah. There, I mean, that was like the... the 
location, the spot, and everybody who did anything in music. Yeah, it that's what it was. Bomb, man. Yep. It can't be either buy the music or check and see if they music selling or try to get the music in or just to chop it up, man. It was was right. it a way to track uh, music back then yes. that we wrote? Yep, yes. Yep, you have yep. sound scan. Yeah, yeah. It's called okay, sound scan. scan. Yeah. They still got sound scan. Okay. okay. It's just on the digital scale. Right, right. Yeah, yeah I got sound scan. Yeah. So your barcode. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So your barcode is, is registered. When yeah. you, you know, you already registered barcode. Right. Whenever we type it in to sell, right. it goes in the database, the system, you right. know, of course. It's just like that of, of the radio station. You got BDS. You know, you have to pay for them yeah. to get they, you know, yeah. royalty scans for, right, yeah. for uh, yeah, the, the points and stuff. Yep, so, yep. Yeah, same thing, man. Yeah. And, uh, speaking of, um, I'm glad we talking numbers, man, because I wanted to uh, talk about like how the deals were structured, right, for cricket letters. Mm -hmm. Like, with the first deal, was that like a good deal for? No. I, they always no. say your first deal be <laughs> fucked up, man. Yeah. So how did? No. How was we, that? We were a tax write off, man. Yeah, 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 man, yeah. We yeah. barely, uh, we probably a hundred thousand. And that ain't nothing. That's yeah. a video. That's it, you know, yeah. that's a video budget. Yeah. That ain't no budget for the album. Nah. You know, an album has to have setup. Right. You know what I'm saying? And all that type of stuff. A video. Album has to have a video, a right. single, yeah. a setup, all that. You know. Roll out so everything. That's way more than a hundred thousand dollars. Even though a hundred thousand dollars was a lot of money in the nineties, you know. Yeah, yeah but they but, saying y'all videos back in the gap with then a million. Yeah, well see we, we didn't have <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. We didn't have a video. We had a single. That was that. We had a radio single, and we had um, we had uh, like promotional stuff, like T-shirts, right, right. All that went into that. Mm -hmm. I still have the T-shirt. I still have posted. I still have a lot of that stuff. Yeah, you know. Yeah. What I'm saying? So it seemed like when Banner's solo deal came around, he he learned from that last. Yeah, deal. most he definitely, was like, it was a better deal. It was a better deal, up. better situation, <laughs> better situation. I mean, he knew better, and you you know, yeah. um, and and but he was the commodity because he did the, all the production. He right. put everything together, so he, and he rapped also. Yeah, you know he what I'm did. Saying? And then um, and it was so good about how he structured uh, his his situation. Um, he had relationships with a lot of the people that he had on his first mixtapes, like the Firewater Boys. Right. We made that, you know, uh, made the Firewater Boys. He had a relationship with Devin the Dude. He had a relationship with Cash Money and No Limit because he went to um, Southern Baton Rouge. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, and he was the the, um, the, the student body president. Yeah. The, you know, oh, yeah, so yeah. he had Cloud over there. He, yeah, SGA, yeah, you know, you know so he, he knew all them cats, uh, all the cats that did radio. That's how I knew uh, Guy Brody and uh, 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 Tweezy, yeah, Tweezy. yeah, that's right, yeah, Tweezy, yeah. yeah so, yeah. so all of that, man. So, um, he was able to get those in, th those folks in, on, in Lil Flip, yeah. Then, um, uh, like a pimp, like a that's pimp. How like a pimp came yeah, up, sir. you know what I'm saying? Uh, like a pimp was a cassette. I, I believe I still had it. It was a cassette with just a piece of a beat on. It. Yeah. Boom, da, 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 boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. That was it. Damn. That was it. Damn. It was just an interlude on a beat tape. We, that was the thing. We used to make beat tapes just to ride, to take our trips, just to listen, and maybe scheme up on a, a, a song or something like that. That was yeah. just a thing we did. We made beat tapes. I had beat tapes. Uh, we had a partner, Gensudeen. Gensudeen doing big things, too. He's in Austin, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Gensudeen. He, uh, he's mellow music artist, hip-hop yeah. artist, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, he's producer. Uh, he do beat tapes, uh, you know, all that. And we just listen to him and just vibe off of him. That was just like, it was a whole family yeah. deal, you know what I'm saying, when yeah. it came to that. But, uh, yeah, but he was able to use that, um, his connections, yeah. and, and kind of bring a mixtape together. And from there, Like a Pimp got a major spin in Atlanta. That's oh, yeah. what got him recognition. Recognition. Hmm. Man, I've been in Like a Pimp. Missed it, man. Yeah. Quinn, them was there. Quinn, I, look, my cousin, all, look, all the motherfuckers was I there, man. Too. Man, I was I mad as too. hell. I man. mean, no, I was there, but uh, people were coming in town, and you know, they think we in the car. You know, I'm going to the car. Yeah, yeah. You know, I come back out. Print, we was looking for you. you was supposed to take a, you know, because they had a crane. Yeah, would lift you up in the air yeah. and spin you around. And they had and that nigga. Yeah, they had, had crazy. You dancing to the thing, you know what I'm saying? I oh, missed, I missed off, my, boy. I missed my shot. I missed Damn, the crane, man. I missed my shot. Damn, you know what I'm saying? And uh, Cadillac on 22s, I missed that because 
I was packing for our, we, we was going on tour right after they did that. They did Cadillac on 22s right there at Manel Gardens. Yeah. Right yeah. there in Queens, yeah. Yeah, they did. For real? So I showed yeah. up. Yeah. They were like, all right, print, it's time to go. <laughs> right. So we got on the, the bus, and that was the first, when I first got on tour with them right there, right yeah. after you recorded Cadillac on 22 video. Yeah, shout out to Savage because when he was in the interview, yeah. he was in the video on that month. I That's think he right. was he an angel yeah. or something. Or some yeah, shit. probably so. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was Savage. Yeah, yeah, for real. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Savage. I know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. A lot of people. Yeah, I was boy. That was a monumental time. Yeah, yeah, it was. Good time. That was great time. Great time, music was great. Yeah, 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 going in the studio like I, I miss that vibe like I'm, yeah. trying, I'm working myself back to that right. just hanging out in the, stu- the studio and, 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 and just making up something from the fly right? right just right there you know vibing off a beat you know what I'm saying spontaneous yeah, shit yeah, yeah yeah man you know what I'm saying and uh that's the magic that's right. the magic you know, right. of it all yeah right. that's what it is oh yeah most yeah. definitely I think one of my last questions would be uh what, what DJ inspired you mm. it's many several um, well, well, let me put it like this. What's the first DJ you saw where you was like, yeah, I want to do this? Mm. Like, I want to do, I want to, I want to well, do what you um, do. Like, you know, a, a thing I used to do when it rained outside and I used to have to sit in the house or if I was on punishment. My mother being a teacher, she used to have a um, little record player with the speakers and everything to play, right. you know, um, you know, records for a story time. Right, like right, that. right, right. So I'll play their records. You know what I'm saying? And read the covers and stuff like that, you know? And that's how I got on to hearing music. So I would listen to, like, War, for instance. War is a 70s group that the average person wouldn't listen to whatever. But I would listen to that record and the different songs. And I'd be like, dang, you know, that's kind of jamming. I mean, I don't know nothing about it, but that's kind of jamming. Uh, that's how I learned about Wes Montgomery. He's a guitarist. He's a jazz guitarist. Right. Different things like that. So just learning about records right there that I had a love. Then when I saw this movie, Wild Style, all right? Well, I met these guys from New York. They were young, they were, they were, they were a little bit older than me, but they were military brats. They mm-hmm. was in their family moved from uh, whatever state's New York to, to Jackson. And they, uh, actually they came from Germany to Jackson, all right? And they had a two, two turntable setup. They had, it was like a stereo component set, like what everybody had, right. but they had two turntables in the mixer. Right. In the middle. And I was like, man, that's a fancy, you know. And they had the Cern Vegas speakers and the whole setup and everything like that. So that was the first time I saw that, you know, with the two turntables. And they had a stereo system. So I saw a movie called Wild Style that came on Night Tracks. What y'all know about Night Tracks? That was, I think they came on TBS. That was like the nighttime music Just related song. movies, videos, mm-hmm. different like that. You know, that's like 80s Night yeah. Tracks. I was, long, I was like, so they had showed a uh, a show called wild style right flash was on it he had his turntables in uh his mama's kitchen uh, in there and he he was the adventures of grandmaster he had grandmaster on the back of his yeah yeah but he would use uh flash gordon yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. The, the character. He would use those records for his name, you know. Yeah. Grandmaster. He would need Flash, Flash, ah, 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 ah. Then, yeah. then, you know, that was the thing, you know yeah. what I'm saying? This yeah. is 1983, 84 for them, but um, this is like 85, 86 for me. Right, 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 right. So that blew my mind, bro. That blew my mind when I saw that. I was like, bro. And then um, the first guy that, uh, introduced me like to DJ he he got turntables that was right in front of me his name DJ Cream of Wheat <laughs> <laughs> the Michael Walker DJ Cream of Wheat <laughs> yeah. okay. so he's older than us I was friends with his brother me and his brother was with the same age you know what I'm saying right, he right, old, right, he's right, like right. three four three four years older than us so he you know got his car first and everything so he was our way to all the parties we was always the youngest too young to get in the party but yeah. because of him we was able to go to the parties and everything like that so i was able to see the first djs in jackson like razzle k uh uh, uh, uh walter stewart that he was right. walsey wall gerard glass dj chili g right and as well as uh shake em up sounds that's dj howie how and Sleepy Nevels. That's right. And, uh, then in the neighborhood, we had DJ Hands and uh, Tony B. They used to, he used to be a part of that crew and all that, all that. So he, 
they were there uh, his age, you know what I'm saying? So I used to go to parties and see them, and that's how I got exposed firsthand. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, Walsey Wall and, and uh, Razzle K, they were the first DJs I saw in person that had Technique 1200s mm -hmm. with the flight, clay, flight cases, that was, you know, all red or whatever color. They right. were you know, fancy, you know what I'm saying? That was the first time I saw that. Then we go from there, my first concert, uh, the Fresh Fest. The Fresh Fest, which uh, had uh, Fat Fat Boys, Houdini. That was in '86. Uh, Grandmaster Flash, uh, Run DMC, countless others. It was so many others. It was here. Yeah, here in Jackson at the Coliseum. Yes. Damn. Yes. It went down, and that's the first time I heard the show by Dougie Fresh and, 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 and uh, Slick Rick. Slick Rick. Yeah, yeah, mm. man. I mean, they cut the lights. All the lights went dark, and you know, everybody ah when the lights go. Dun, 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 dun. They came on. I never heard that in my life. And at the time, uh, 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 Inspector Gadget was the cartoon. Yeah, it was very yeah, popular cartoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we ran home after school to watch Inspector yeah, Gadget. Yeah, Inspector yeah. Gadget. So this is a rap song, and they got the melody to Inspector Inspect Gadget, Gadget on it. Yeah. I lost my mind, man. Yeah. Man, I lost my mind. Yeah. That, at that point right there, it was over. Yeah, it was over. Fun Dude, fact though, I did not know Slick Rick now was dissing the Fat Boys on that motherfucker. I didn't know either. I didn't know. Where, Dougie, where Fresh, Dougie Fresh, Dougie uh, Fresh, shit from um, well, yeah, he said, from uh, Cool Slick Rock, Rick, from Cool uh, Rock, from Cool yeah, Rock. Yeah, because he said he's the. Uh, I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't do the hugger hugger. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Beatbox. Yeah, I ain't yeah, know everybody. That. But see, you had so many different beatboxes, man. That was like I said, like when we came up, we had the bumps yeah. and levels. Every MC had a different beatbox. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's how we structure our group. You know what I'm saying? Like, they had a different beatbox. So, beatboxing was a thing then. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And, but, Dougie Fresh was more advanced because he had the clicking with him. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? And uh, so, he was new and improved. But, human beatbox, we felt like he was the original because we heard him first. We heard the human beatbox with the fat boys first. Yeah. And then you had Just Ice. He had... His beatboxer was called DMX. Yeah. Yep, he was DMX, you know, Latoya, you know, the, the song Latoya, yeah. they, they did that song, you know what I'm saying? I feel like yeah, Biz so knew how to, Biz, yeah, Biz, Biz, Biz knew how they style. Later on though, Biz, yeah, he combined because he was singing and beatboxing and all that at the same time. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I would get mixtapes from New York from my, my guys that I, you know, uh, met or whatever. Yeah. And it would have mixes from DJ Red Alert, DJ Chuck Chill Out, Mr. Magic, Rap Attack, all of that. And that was building the whole narrative of what's going on. Like mm -hmm. when uh, Carol's 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 one was dissing MC Shan and Marley Mall. You know the bridge is over and all that. Right. I I heard that firsthand on mixtape right there. Like kind of like like firsthand real time. Right. You know what I'm saying like it might have not been right there hearing it, but I got it because that tape was recorded last week or last month. Mm, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So. That's how I heard like a lot of underground hip hop, like um, man, you name it, um, uh, Slick Rick, uh, uh, Grandmaster Flash, Big Daddy uh, Kane, Big Daddy Kane uh, Biz Markey, uh, uh, Rakim, Eric B and Rakim, uh, Eric B for president. I came in the door. Uh, I said, said it before. before. I never let the mic magnetize me no more. That's yeah. the first. Eric B. and Rakim song I heard on the mixtape, right? For sure. I was singing that. I was making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I was singing <laughs> that, rapping that song, and he said, uh, he, uh, he was talking about a woman in a relationship. He said, uh, you treat me like a, uh, you treat me like a donut. You tried to glaze me. At the, yeah. That was one of the parts of it. I said, then my dad was like, well, what you talking about? He said, man, you too young to even be even know what he even saying in there. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> but I'm just rapping because, you know, that's a, it was cool, you know, yeah. my, my thing, yeah. but yeah, man, it changed my life, man. Those groups and the, those experiences changed my life, and that's why I'm here today. Right. Yes, doing what I'm doing, man, and I'm, 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 I'm very thankful. Man. I'm living my second, I'm going my second run now. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I, I feel like this is my second run. Yeah, you know, new experience. So. Uh, I'm in radio, B-Day 99.1, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Uh, man, it's, it's yeah. a blessing, bro. Yeah, it's a yes, blessing. Sheer blessing. Yes, sure. sir. Yes, sir. Damn, man. So look, man, you got a hell of a story. Man, man, man. Gonna and that's have to just bring you back. Picks, you got to do a part two, man. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. Well, you got to do a part two. Definitely got a part two. 
Yeah, of I course. definitely got to get a part two. Yeah. So tell the people where they can find you, man, and, and what you got going on. Yeah. Well, uh, right now I'm just uh, all around. Well, I'm at Chemistry twice a month. You know what I'm saying? With Murph Too Cold, of course, we're doing the thing right mm-hmm. there. You know what I'm saying? I'm at uh, any grown-up party at a, at a theater near yeah. you. <laughs> right now I'm working on uh, everything virtually, doing you know, going live so you can see me at any, any given time, podcast-wise and mixing live, too, as well. Uh, you can catch me at P-H-I-N-G-A-P-R-I-N-T. That's fingerprint and all my social media. That's Instagram. It's Fingerprint Washington on Facebook. And uh, Twitter is just P-H-I-N-G-A right there. That's how you can catch up with me. Fingerprint.com is in the work right now. It's been in the works for a while, but it's coming to theater near you, and that's where that's going to be the location where you can see everything. Fingerprint, uh, chime in on the live sessions, the podcast. It's going to be just the number one spot where you can get everything that's going down with, with yours truly. So yeah, yeah. for it's sure, for like sure. That. Yeah. And yeah. another rendition of the One Way Show, you man. You already yeah. know what it is, man. The infamous DJ Fingerprint I with us this time. It. Appreciate y'all having me, man. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. listen, man, it's only one way, dog. And, and this up. up. Believe that. <laughs>